What I have here in City Skylines is just an ordinary four-way intersection built using the four-lane medium road and by default it creates the vanilla traffic lights with the default traffic light phases. As you can see it's not really working all that optimally so what I would like to do is I would like to use the traffic manager mod and its function the timed traffic lights and I'm going to show you on this example how I would set up uh, different kinds of phases and uh, basically just guide you through uh, you know doing this. So we are going to click on the timed traffic lights. I'm going to select this node. Now there is this uh, this option for a quick setup. Let me actually show you what it does and why I don't recommend it. Uh, I'm going to hold control and click this uh, node and it's already going to create four phases for me. They are called states in here, but they are phases. I'm going to call them phases from now on anyway. So the quick setup is going to give one entrance into the intersection green light. And also it's going to give like a small little green light on turning right on the road that is on the right side of the one that's currently going, right? So uh, that's not exactly optimal. As you can see, there are not really that many vehicles in the intersection. I mean, sure, yeah, the vehicles are not clipping into each other. This, that's like a bonus, I suppose. But overall, the capacity is just very, very low. Uh, this uh, quick setup would be absolutely terrible on a three-way intersection. Very, very inefficient. On a four-way intersection, it's slightly less so bad, but, you know, it's not really that great either. Uh, this would probably be useful for something like six, seven, eight way intersections, but uh, you probably don't build those anyway, right? You're just gonna build a roundabout instead in that situation. So I really don't recommend this. And to be perfectly fair, I don't really understand the motivation. Like if you are committed to doing timed traffic lights already, then why would you just, just take this shortcut, right? Uh, if you really don't want to do timed traffic lights, then don't keep the vanilla ones or just use priority signs. Anyway, the point of time traffic lights function is obviously to create your own completely from scratch. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to click uh, this uh, node again. I'm going to set up time traffic lights. The same window appears, but this time it's empty and I'm going to add steps. Now in here we have a bunch of options. Uh, by default, we have the minimum and maximum time uh, set to one. Now this is something that we will have to change. We cannot keep this on default. So I'm going to actually go to the same values from the quick setup, for example, because that's kind of like the default values, but you kind of need to type them in. So the minimum time, that is the time when the light phase is not going to change at all. It's just going to remain like it is without any kind of changes, even though if even though there are no vehicles driving through, through the intersection, for example, and there are a million vehicles waiting. But until the minimum time has passed, it cannot switch. Now, after it passed, it's going to take a look at these conditions and compare them to the situation uh, on the intersection, the traffic situation. And if the conditions are satisfied, it's going to switch to the next phase. Now, if they're not, then it's just going to wait until the maximum time passes. OK, so I think uh, seven seconds is the default in the quick setup. So let's just put these numbers in there. I'm going to later talk about how you can just uh, do some modifications to these. Right now, let's just leave the conditions on default. The default condition is more waiting than driving, which is a highly logical uh, condition because if there are more vehicles just waiting on the red line, then it's obviously a good idea to just switch and allow them through, right? Now, some of these other conditions might be useful in highly specific uh, situations. I, for example, showed you in that previous, previous video, uh, the someone is waiting condition might be useful for the trams, giving trams the priority light. So check out that video if you are interested in that. But for just these kinds of very ordinary intersections, the default condition is actually the best. Now this slider, we're going to talk about that later as well, okay? So two and seven minimum maximum time, and that's going to be it. Now the most important bit, and that's obviously going to be switching the actual actual lights. So I'm going to pause the game here, just so it's clearer. And as you can see, we have these uh, traffic lights separated right here. Now, if you are building this uh, using different roads, you might not have this, or maybe it's some kind of option in the traffic manager, I'm not sure. But anyway, if you don't have it separated like this, as you can see, I have the arrows, you might, for example, have something like this, then there's this button to change the mode. So you're going to click it a couple of times until you have all those directions separated like this, because like I said, this, this is just much better. It's uh, going to kind of visualize it better how the intersection is working. Now, what I'm going to set up is I'm actually going to set up the same phasing as the vanilla. 
uh, traffic lights would uh, would work. But uh, we are going to do some kind of changes later. I'm going to explain how exactly it works. And then I'm going to show you some realistic phases. Even though this is actually also a realistic phase, you might encounter it in real life. So what it basically is, is that there is a green light on everything on one road and green light on everything else on the opposite road. Okay, that's the face. That's the entire face. So I'm going to click add here and add step another one in here. I'm just going to turn everything back to, to, to red and I'm going to just turn the phase basically 90 degrees. So I'm just going to do this. That's it. Those are the two phases that the vanilla game does. I'm going to click start and I'm going to unpause the game. Now this is going to work uh, similarly to the vanilla game, even though it's probably going to start switching a bit, uh, you know, earlier, as you can see. As you can see, the, there are a lot of vehicles waiting on these intersections. Now, by the way, I showed you in that uh, another tutorial that I did a couple of days ago, how you can actually do the priority signs much more efficient if you make the segments uh, way longer uh, before the intersection. Now, in my experience, for the time traffic lights, this doesn't really affect the algorithms that much. There is uh, very little change in, in that regard. So, I don't know, there might be some, some specific situations where that might be useful. For example, when I did, again, that tram priority light, if the segment where the trams are going into the intersections are longer, then that condition is going to be satisfied way, uh, way in advance because the tram is obviously going to trigger the condition if it enters the first segment that joins the intersection. But uh, for this condition, the more wait, more more waiting than driving, I don't really see it affecting the algorithms that much. Okay, so uh, changing the segment size, I don't know, it doesn't really do that much. Okay, so we're just going to keep it as it was built. Anyway, as you can see, the intersection is not really working all that optimally because it's switching all the time. Uh, every every time the minimum time is uh, is passed, it's just immediately going to switch almost. And I think that even the maximum time is kind of short. Okay, we can really see that the intersection is basically empty. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to stop this. I'm going to go to edit, and let's maybe do the minimum time like four, and uh, maybe I don't know, maybe like fifteen maximum time. Okay. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go and edit this again. And I'm doing this because I saw that the phases might be a bit too short. Okay. Now in here, I'm changing both of these. Let's actually do start. I'm changing both of these. I usually try to go for like three to five times the, the maximum time. I'm going to go like three to five times the minimum time. But uh, you might want to go even higher if you have like a main road. And uh, you're going to do some kind of conditions so that uh, when when th these are obviously like both main roads, but if you are doing time traffic lights on a main road and some kind of side roads, then you might want to do like a very long maximum time for that main road. Because if there are just a couple of vehicles waiting on the side road, it's not really going to trigger the condition, right? It's only going to trigger it when uh, some some vehicles are just going to pile up in there, right? More than just a few. But that's not really the case in here. In this case, I kind of have like a even traffic almost. Anyway, uh, it helped. It helped. But still, we are not even reaching that uh, maximum time. And I think I would probably like to have a maybe a more uh, or less switches actually. Because think about it. If you have like a fixed time, like an hour, for example, then obviously you're going to maximize the efficiency of the intersection by not really doing the switches because during the switching time, there are no vehicles moving through the intersection, of course. So you kind of want to minimize the switching, uh, the time it takes for the lights to switch, which means that you need to minimize the time that uh, or minimize the cases or numbers of the switches, right? If you are switching all the time, then obviously no one is going to move ever through the intersection. Anyway, I'm going to edit this and I'm now going to play with the slider for the sensitivity. So I think by default, it's on 0 0.8. Now this uh, basically the, the slider, what it does is it uh, puts more emphasis either on the cars that are driving or waiting. So if you are going to move the slider, it's already kind of on the left. But if you are going to move it even further to the left, like 0 0.1, it's going to tell you that it's going to do very long phases. That's kind of what I would like to have in this case. And what it basically says is that it's uh, putting more weight 
on the cars that are driving. So even though there are fewer cars driving, it's not going to satisfy the conditions. Okay, uh, or that easily. So basically, the condition is not going to be that sensitive. Yeah, I'm th I think I'm going to try it. I think I'm really going to try uh, going for that 0.1. And we're going to see how that's going to look like. So I'm just going to move the slider on both of the of the uh, of the phases and I'm going to hit start. Okay, I'm going to keep this window open just so I can see the phases, how they are uh, currently looking like and uh, obviously the numbers. What uh, what do we have right now? So we can see that uh, the conditions are actually not satisfied until the maximum time is reached, which might not be all that ideal because right now we saw, uh, let's, uh, let's make it faster. We saw that uh, there were a lot of, uh, there were a lot of vehicles already waiting. Now, by the way, what I did just here is that I created what's called in real life a permissive left turn. It basically means that the left turn is only going to do the turn if there are no vehicles uh, from the incoming direction, right? Uh, just like in real life. But unfortunately, you can see that uh, the cars are not even moving into the intersection. Usually in real life, if you have a green light for turning uh, left for a permissive turn, uh, you are going to move into the intersection, but uh, not so that you would go inside the lane that is going straight against you, right? And you're just going to wait. Sometimes in some European countries, there might be another like a green light, just a lonely green, uh, like, a, like a light uh, very close to the crosswalk uh, sign, for example, which is going to tell you to leave the intersection after just a couple of seconds after the phase uh, started, right? Now, this is, uh, this is actually modeled in, in City Skylines in the traffic manager, and uh, you can set it up in the options. It is in the options, if I go into the traffic manager, gameplay, policies, yes. At junctions, there's this option. Vehicles follow priority rules at junctions with time traffic lights. I have it on right now, but it's not really working how I would imagine it. I never used it, but I just noticed that it's there, so I wanted to try it. But as you can see, even though the left turns have a green light, they are still waiting at the at the lights and they are only moving through the intersection when there are some cars moving through. Now this is actually something that might be solved by changing the segment sizes because uh, they are obviously waiting just like on the priority signs, right? So where do we have this? So let's actually move this node way closer into, into the intersection. This one maybe as well. And uh, this might be like super close already. Let's move it a bit further away. And this is definitely going to help this option. I'm only going to do this on this horizontal road and I'm just going to see how that works. Yeah, that actually worked quite well, quite well, even though the phases are still maybe a bit short and the left turns are not exactly working all that optimally, even though we do have uh, many more left turns right now. So that's, uh, that's kind of looking all right. But as you could have seen, uh, there are even vehicles here waiting when, uh, when there are some vehicles from the opposite direction doing a right turn. Now this kind of leads me to another thing that I need to talk about when it comes to the tra timed traffic lights because when you are doing these you also need to keep in keep in mind that you need to tell the vehicles where to line up in front of the intersection, how to navigate the intersection inside of it and where to end up. You are basically defining just the just the first and the third what I just said. Obviously the cars are going to go from the lane into the correct lane, right? You are you don't have an option to just make them go uh, somewhere else inside the intersection, right? To like loop around or something. That's obviously not how it works. But anyway, in this case, this is this is unchanged. This is vanilla basically. And what do we have here is that uh, vehicles that are turning left, for example, this red car right here, it can go either it can go either to the leftmost lane or the rightmost lane. It can choose, right? So that's not exactly ideal. Another thing is that uh, the vehicles that are going uh, straight by default, they can actually use both of the lanes. And again, that's not ideal. And I'm not really sure, but I think that the cars turning right may also uh, switch lanes at the intersections, but maybe, maybe not. But definitely the ones that are turning left, I have seen them do that. Now, that's probably the reason why the vehicles that are turning left are actually waiting for the opposite direction to turn right, which is kind of weird because they should ideally end up in separate lanes and they should be able to go uh, parallel. 
but they don't do that by default. We need to tell them to do that. Now, I see people all the time use the lane arrows function in the traffic manager. It is obviously the function. Oh yeah, we don't have them straight actually in here, but uh, usually usually that's that's how it is in uh, in some cases. Maybe I already switched that before. I don't know. On three-way intersections, it definitely is by default that uh, both lanes can go straight on these kinds of roads. Now, uh, yeah, so the lane arrows. I usually see people use the lane arrows function. You can just click these and basically disable the turns or going straight on, se on certain lanes. But it's not going to solve the issue of cars not going into the correct lanes, okay? So that's why I don't really use this at all. And I'm actually using only the lane connector function where I'm going to draw the lines manually. So I'm going to start from this road down here and I'm going to make it so that cars turning left are going to go into the leftmost lane and cars going right here are going to go into the rightmost lane, okay? Now in here I'm going to do the same thing and I'm also going to make it so that cars going straight can only do so from the rightmost lane, okay? And I'm actually going to make it so that they need to go into the left lane in here. And that's because I want to alter the traffic lights so that vehicles from this direction can actually make a turn together with the cars going straight over here. Now this is probably not going to be all that realistic or it might be a bit even illegal in real life to do this kind of turn even though I think that in the United States for example maybe in certain states not all I don't, I don't know I've never been there but I know that there is that uh, thing that you can do a right turn on even on red right even some in European countries you might have just like a sign on the intersection that basically shows like a green arrow pointing at the at the right so that might be that might be realistic but obviously if you wanted to make this even more realistic like for example the cars turning left for example in the Czech Republic they can actually choose whether or not to use the leftmost lane or the rightmost lane so they cannot go parallel or if there was a if there was a car crash over here then uh, then no one would care that uh, the driver intended to go parallel to the turning car okay so basically they have the right to choose the lane but if you made the intersection realistically so that you would paint some kind of symbols there that would clearly divide those lines then that would be fine you would probably use the node controller you would make the intersection larger let me actually do that already because that's kind of the point of this if you are doing uh, time traffic lights chances are you're trying to make your intersection customized anyway so uh, you would probably do some kind of higher corner offsets with the node controller and in that case you are probably going to you know do some painting on the intersection where you would probably uh, do some kind of uh, lines uh, like this and that would obviously just uh, separate those uh, left and right turns okay let me just delete this this is not really the topic of this video and uh, maybe even make this uh, slightly slightly smaller this corner offset let's put it to like 25 okay so enough of that let's finish these uh, these lane connections actually so that was just a little little bit of theory now I'm just going to finish this uh, so that uh, we have it everywhere I'm putting this uh, this uh, line going straight into the leftmost lane because obviously they don't have the same face so they won't interfere with each other but I really do want to separate that uh, turning right because that might actually help uh, the traffic flow quite a lot but obviously in this situation we have a four-way intersection which means that uh, we do need to have at least one of these turns shared with uh, another one so in this case we are sharing the same lane for turning right and going straight now if you have a lot of traffic going uh, right for example this might not be ideal usually in real life it is done so that the left turn is separated and uh, the going straight is the same as the turn right but um, you know that's usually because turning left is not really uh, the highest volume of the intersection usually in intersections the highest volume goes straight but in this particular case on this map I have the traffic going kind of evenly in all directions so it might be actually a good idea to just do a six lane road on both the entrances and exits but right now this is this is kind of how you might want to you know start with so as we can see we have the arrows or the connectors kind of nice and symmetrical everywhere so that's good now I'm just going to return to the time traffic lights and uh, I'm going to do those uh, changes that I that I uh, mentioned before so I'm going to go for a stop and I'm going to edit the first phase for example and I'm going to allow vehicles to make a right turn okay 
So I'm going to save it. I'm going to go to the second one and I'm going to make uh, those right turns there. And let's just see how that's going to perform. So uh, there might be a bit of a problem with those right turns because obviously now they have green over there, but the first car waiting in the line did not. So that's a bit of a problem. And even in real life, you sometimes might have that, but the car that's just in front of you uh, has uh, different plans than you and they have a red light. So there's nothing you can do, unfortunately. What you would do, obviously, in this situation, like I said, if you have a lot of volume of traffic, or even if you don't, actually, but it's just creating issues. You might have a huge volume of traffic going a certain direction, but it's just going to be slowed down by the cars that want to go, I don't know, straight or something, right? So that's a bit of a problem. So if you have uh, the volumes kind of uneven, you kind of need to have separate lanes. Anyway, this is the vanilla improved uh, phasing. As you can see, it's working really well. And uh, yeah, actually changing the segment sizes did work a bit uh, when you have the options for uh, following the priority signs, uh, even in timed traffic light intersections. Let me actually turn that off to show you what it does. And uh, you can see that it's doing pretty much exactly what the vanilla game would do. The cars turning left are just going into the cars that are going straight. They are not waiting at all. I mean, they're kind of waiting just when they start clipping through each other, but uh, it's just looking terrible as you can see. And uh, I'm not really sure if there are the same issues as uh, in the vanilla intersections, but there might be. Now the time traffic lights, in my experience, they are actually switching uh, slower than the traffic lights uh, on uh, on regular vanilla intersections. I'm not really sure why that is, but anyway, if you had this intersection like much much bigger with the node controller, for example, you might want to do this. You might want to actually create another step where everything is gonna be uh, gonna be red, and uh, you're gonna have like uh, a second, okay, minimum and maximum time. You're gonna add it and I'm actually going to move it up so that it's going to be state two. You can clearly see which is which because uh, first of all, you can just click the view, which is going to give you the, uh, the lights in here, but you can also tell by these numbers, which are the minimum and maximum times, of course. Now I'm going to create this step again because it needs to be uh, on that uh, on the last position as well. So what I did now is I created a little buffer before the switching happens so that all the left turns in case they are kind of jammed in the intersection, uh, they can wait until all the vehicles uh, clear through the intersection before the next phase happens. So this is much better. This is actually how you can improve the vanilla phasing. Yeah, you see that all the cars left the intersection before uh, before the other phase uh, started. So that's very good. That's what you might want to do. And maybe even the one second in this case might be, you know, just uh, just uh, not enough, but uh, it's it's fine. I'm just showing you how you can do it. Anyway, let's uh, let's get rid of this. And I'm actually going to show you another possibility uh, for like a realistic, uh, more realistic uh, lightning uh, lighting phases. So I'm going to create another step. I'm going to go from scratch and I'm going to go for maybe the same numbers as before. So what was that Four and 10 or 15 we did. And uh, we're going to go for maybe flow sensitivity again, 0 0.1, or maybe this time I'm going to go for 0 0.2. And I'm going to start with only going for left turns. Okay, so I'm going to do left turn over here. Now these roads, they can have right turn, but this one is going to have left and this one right. Okay. So that's one one phase. Now the second phase, I'm going to put everything to red just so it's clearer. Actually, I could have put those uh, to to right turns. I could have left them because that's where that's what they're going to be. But uh, doesn't matter. I'm going to now go straight and right, right over here, straight and right and right. Okay. So I'm going to add it. Now I'm just going to turn 90 degrees and basically do the same thing, but for you know the other road. So this time I'm going to go for another step. I'm going to put everything to red. This time it's going to be left turn right here, right turn, left turn, and right turn. Okay, and I'm going to end up at the road where I started. I'm going to add it. Now I'm going to add another step. I'm going to put everything to red before I start. And in here, going straight, right, right, straight, right, and uh, right. Yes. Okay. So this is a, this is actually a, 
uh, very American uh, style of phasing, which is called, well, it's not called, but uh, the one phase where we have the left turns, those are protected left turns, the so-called protected left, left turns. That basically means that the cars going left, they don't need to wait for anything. In real life, this would be symbolized by the arrow pointing left. Which is, which is telling the drivers in a lot of countries, in Europe and the United States, that there is the so-called protective left turn. So they don't need to care about the traffic in the rest of the intersection, they can just go freely where they want to go. As you can see, it's uh, not exactly all that efficient in city skylines, because I might not really have that much uh, traffic going left, because... Uh, I don't know, I don't know exactly why, but I just don't, it seems like. Uh, traffic in here, in front of the intersection, just wants to pile up into the into the lane going straight mostly, or turning right. Now, by the way, one thing that you might improve, you might actually improve the intersection, you might want to do the lane connectors, and you might actually want to ban changing uh, lanes right in front of the intersection, because right now, cars cannot really stack up in front of it uh, that efficiently. So what I would like to do is I would like to click these nodes and I would like to con press Control S if that's the, the that's the shortcut that you have, which is, as you can see over here, going to do the stay in lane, repeat the cycle through different modes, right? So I'm going to do that uh, for all of these four nodes that are going into the intersection. That's going to help quite a lot. Okay, so uh, what kind of what kind of basic tips I could give you for these time traffic lights? So uh, you don't really want to do that many phases, clearly, because you want to put as many vehicles into the intersection at any given time. You want to maximize the efficiency. So these four phases in this particular case uh, might not be ideal because uh, the left turns are not really seeing that high volume of traffic. But even though they not, you might still want to consider doing these protected left turns when you have a very high volume of traffic going straight, for example, because uh, it might uh, it might be just better to allow those uh, few cars through and uh, you know do it in a protected manner and then just uh, allow the rest of the high flow through. And obviously the phase that is going to give the high flow now uh, the high volume, the green, you might want to give that uh, give that some kind of uh, very high uh, average, uh, sorry, some kind of very high maximum time, maybe even the minimum time, and you might want to put that uh, slider all the way to the left, okay? And maybe if you have, uh, yeah, those left turns with not so many vehicles, you might actually want to do the phases uh, kind of uh, more sensitive. So I could do that, I could do that. I could take the first phase, I could pay, I could take the flow sensitivity, put it to something like 0.8, actually I can leave it on default and state three, exactly the same thing. And we might see how that's going to work. I'm going to start and uh, we're just going to observe how the traffic is going to move. Again, I might put those uh, interfaces in there where everything is red, just so the intersection is gonna be cleared. But uh, it's not super necessary, as so I'm just going to you know keep it as it is. So this is working quite nicely. I really like this traffic flow on this intersection. I would probably improve this by adding those uh, third lanes on the entrances and exits, so six lane roads, because like I said, I do have that traffic turning right. I have quite a lot of cars there, and usually there's just that one guy who wants to go straight that is obviously blocking everything. So yeah, I would probably do that in order to to do this. Now, obviously, if you have uh, if you have pedestrians, you kind of need to add pedestrians uh, also into the phases. Uh, there are the special uh, there are the special. Actually, actually, let me show you how it looks like if I'm going to allow uh, crosswalks in here with the traffic manager and I'm going to click this and I can also see that I have uh, these in here. Now what I would like to do in this particular phasing situation, for example this one, you kind of want to, and that's kind of how it is in real life, you want to do the crossings uh, 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 red uh, red, uh, red light when there are cars moving through that road or originating from that road. And then you want to do the uh, green lights on on the road where there are only cars uh, going uh, right into the road, okay? So for example, right now, I have those protected, life, li uh, protected uh, left turns, sorry. And uh, in that case, I would need to have uh, everything red for pedestrians, okay? Now in that second phase, 
I only have vehicles turning right. Now, in this particular case, if I have pedestrians, I would probably need to change this state so that these guys cannot uh, do the right turn, actually, okay? Because they are going to be going from the road, but on this road, I want to have that green. And as you can see, actually, if I just go for this switch, it's immediately going to do the automatic switch to the green. So that kind of tells you that... Uh, you know, that's how it needs to be. And uh, the game is right in this case. That actually is how it needs to be. So I did it on state two. And since state four is kind of symmetrical, I would uh, also do it there. And uh, I would have to uh, switch those uh, right turns off. Now, there is a possibility in real life you might sometimes encounter situations where uh, you're just going to have those phases for the cars. And then there might be like a fifth phase, which is going to have everything red four vehicles and it's just going to have the crosswalks everywhere uh, open. Those are usually the kind of situations where you have crosswalks uh, diagonally going through the intersection. Unfortunately, in city skylines, that's not really possible. So that's probably not going to be all that efficient. And uh, obviously, if you have like a super high volumes of traffic on intersections, then it might be a good idea to just create some kind of an overpass for pedestrians, uh, do some kind of a pedestrian path. Because uh, what is the number one thing that is uh, making traffic worse in urban environment in city skylines? It's obviously pedestrians, because cars always need to uh, wait on them on the sidewalks or on the crosswalks. And, uh, you know, the collision detection is kind of weird in that regard. So it's not exactly working optimally. So it's best to just do uh, an overpass or some kind of underpass, doesn't matter. But basically just uh, divert the people from the crosswalks, okay? But it's definitely important to allow people to cross these intersections because uh, it's just going to improve the traffic overall. You know, if you if you allow people to just drive cars, drive cars everywhere, that's obviously going to make your uh, traffic situation uh, much worse. But I kind of digress. But as you can see, uh, doing time traffic lights alone is uh, not really going to solve your traffic situation. That's kind of uh, already known that uh, everything is connected to everything else in in terms of uh, fixing traffic in city skylines, right? You're not going to fix one intersection and going to be done with. So you need to think about the pedestrians as well, need to think about all the rest of the things, okay? So anyway, that was just a quick uh, tutorial on how to do time traffic lights. This was one possibility on how to do the phases. I highly suggest that you look into different kind of phasing options because uh, these kind of tools that we have in City Skylines, and I was talking about this on stream, there is this idea that uh, if you have a simulation in the game, traffic simulation in this case, and it's approaching the behavior of real life, then why not simply go and search for some real life solutions to all of these issues? Because, you know, the engineers in real life already figured it out. So why not just take inspiration from there? And there are very, very nice publicly available uh, articles or all kinds of like handbooks uh, from, for example, the American, the Federal Highway Association, it's called. I'm not really sure. I'm going to put links in the description. They have really nice articles about all kinds of phases, options, all kind of intersections and theory and everything. So if you are really interested in this and different kinds of phases, then definitely do uh, check that out. And if you're just going to Google the uh, traffic light phasing or phases, then uh, it's definitely going to show you some results as well and going to give you some idea how these kinds of things are solved in real life. Obviously, in real life, you have the safety aspect, which... Uh, which is kind of used a lot for like uh, the motivation of these kind of protected left turns and stuff like that. But in city scans, you don't really need to care, but it's obviously up to you to just experiment with uh, all these kinds of solutions and find the right way. But I just showed you how to do the time traffic lights, what to do with the minimum and maximum time, what they do, and what to do with that slider, the sensitivity of the conditions, okay? So that's going to be all. This was probably a bit longer than I wanted to, but uh, this is kind of a complicated topic and I really didn't want to uh, skip through it all that fast, okay? So once you're done with the intersection, you might want to do the painting with the intersection marking tools, of course, and do the intersections really, really nice. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully it was helpful to you. If you enjoyed the video, you can always put the thumbs up below. You can share the video with your friends if you think they might find it helpful. And I will see you with some other videos. Also, big thanks to the channel supporters, the channel members. All right. So I'm going to see you with the next uh, video on Thursday. Until then, take care and goodbye.